French existentialist philosopher Albert Camus once wrote that there's only one really serious philosophical problem, and that is suicide. Deciding whether or not life is worth living is to answer the most fundamental question in philosophy. All other questions follow from that, he said. Is life worth living? In one of his books called The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus pointed out the absurdity of existence. And so we can't stop asking ourselves if it's even worth the trouble to live. But Camus considered that even that question, is life worth living, that question itself is absurd because since there is no intrinsic meaning to the world, we can never answer the question about the purpose of existence. No matter what we do, no matter what we think, no matter what we think is the purpose of existence, we will die, it will all end. Death has no more meaning than life. Instead, said Camus, we should accept the absurdity of our life and live it to the fullest. Live it in its complete absurdity. So we should not fall into despair, but nor should we hope. Despair finds its ultimate expression in suicide, while hope tries to deny the absurdity of life by imagining some future religious afterlife in, f in which we find meaning in death or after death. And so, said Camus, the struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. We must imagine Sisyphus happy. Neither giving up his meaningless task, nor trying to give it some illusory significance, but simply living every moment of his task to the fullest. Just love life, said Camus. And so he described, the breeze is cool and the sky blue. I love this life with abandon and wish to speak of it boldly. It makes me proud of my human condition. Yet people have often told me there's nothing to be proud of. Yes, there is. This sun, this sea, my heart leaping with youth, the salt taste of my body and this vast landscape in which tenderness and glory merge in blue and yellow. Camus especially rejected all religious conceptions of an afterlife, or of the immortality of the soul, which he considered as illusory escapades from the unavoidable absurdity of life and death. But whether it's illusory or not, humans have been thinking about the meaning of death and imagining an afterlife since the earliest records of human life, which are often found of in the form of tombs. Humans have buried their dead and placed objects in tombs, presumably for the dead to take along with them into the next world for at least 100,000 years. The capacity to imagine people existing without their bodies, imagining them continuing to live after their physical death in another place or dimension, is perhaps one of the key distinguishing features of human beings in contrast to other animal species. In most, if not all, cultures in the world, people report the dead visiting them or speaking to them in their dreams, or they feel the presence of the dead around them. Whether or not these dreams and feelings are true or just receptive imaginations, for the people concerned, they confirm their sense that the souls of the dead continue to live in another realm or dimension. 
one thing is for sure, your body will die. This is the truth about your body. But there's another thing. You want your life and your death to have meaning. This is the truth about your spirit. And you have the capacity to imagine yourself beyond your body, to imagine yourself beyond space and time. Making meaning or finding meaning is an essential function of your spirit. Now think about it. If your life were utterly and completely meaningless, you'd ask yourself, why even bother living? And as Sartre said, you'd even hate yourself for being too weak to end your life. So it's as if a life without meaning isn't a life at all. On the other hand, it's as if a life full of meaning is a true life. So, if your body is alive but there's no meaning, it's as if you're already dead. Like a zombie. So actually, you could say that you have different levels of life. You have your physical life, which is the life of your body. You have your intellectual life, which is the life of your mind. You have your spiritual life, which is the life of your spirit. It's possible to be physically alive, but intellectually and spiritually dead. Just like an animal, a body seeking for food, shelter, and survival. But without thinking and without meaning. It's also possible to be biologically and intellectually alive, but spiritually dead. Think of someone who works in an office, using intellectual procedures to think with his mind all day. through you at all levels. The life of your body, 
of your mind and of your spirit. The question then is how to channel it.